Just kidding, no apology today. Welcome to my YouTube channel, my name is Isla Diaz. And as you can see by the title of this video, I really wanna share my LSD acid trip experience that led me to the mental hospital. Oh, I got psychosis and then I went to the mental hospital. Yes, okay. So first off, I'm gonna give you a little background of why I took it. I took it because, oh also I don't condone in drugs. Thank you very much. I took it because I was trying to like experience the beingness of being and I was all about that spiritual stuff. Meditation, chakras, crystals, crystal healing, incense, you know. I was all up in that. I was reading books like uh, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, or Tolle, whatever. The Untethered Soul. I was really in it. I took it, I took it before, like I think like a couple times, maybe twice. So yeah, I took it, me, my brother, and my friends. And so I was meditating at a table in the backyard, just existing. My brother and his friends, they come up, they go smoke in the shed. They see me and then they join me. And they're like, hey, what you doing? And I'm like, just chilling, just vibing. And they're like, oh, true. And <laughs> oh, I'm so awkward. So we're just chilling, having a conversation and I'm just sitting there. I remember asking, what is being? My almost stepbrother tries to define it. What I expected was just for nobody to say anything and just like literally be. That was the definition, you know. But then my brother, my twin brother notices that my almost stepbrother keeps trying to define it. Every time I rephrase a question and then my twin, he all of a sudden he like notices, oh my God, like is that ego or something? Cause I was talking about ego. We we're talking about ego too. That's how I try to, I guess, define ego was if somebody around the table tried to actually define what being is, I didn't want anybody to actually answer, just just literally be there. Everything goes in a whole loop. So all of a sudden he sees the same two people go around our fence. He sees the same bee go around him twice and it keeps happening in a loop. At that moment, that's when he like broke through. He was like, <laughs> So I also broke through too, and I had it at the same time. But for me, I saw white light, and I saw angel wings on my sides, white angel wings. All of a sudden, the whole curtain of this reality lifted. And uh, all of a sudden, I was put in some weird <laughs> dimension. I could see the table, I could see my friends. That was the only thing in focus for me. And everything else, it was like a grid. It felt like a grid, but also it wasn't. It was it was weird. In the sky, I could see the clouds. It turned into fractals dancing. They were just all dancing fractals. Fractals are like really complex shapes. Everything was perfect. I look to my side and I see my, my brother. His face, it looks perfect. There's dancing fractals on his face. I want to touch it. It's so soft. The graphics, it was like, it felt realer than real. It felt like the realest thing ever. I cannot explain how real it felt. It was like that was what reality was. I also felt like I was at the top, like I was God or something. I could literally create anything I want. I was a creator. And so that time, it really sunk in. It felt like so much information at once that I just couldn't <laughs> like grasp it. And then I saw my friends, they all had white flickering lights. It was like dim. So after that happened, the whole God thing, like I'm the creator, I'm the main character, you know. After that happened, I felt ex, oh, extremely alone, super alone. I could not live if I was gonna be alone at the top. So I see my brother next to me and all of a sudden I'm like, hey. I take him with me. I want somebody to be there with me once I took him. He saw the same thing, reality being lifted, whatever. It was like a video game, but also the realest thing ever. So me and my brother really had that sink in, the I'm the creator mentality. So we start sharing information with our friends and stuff about what we learned in the trip. A lot of them were actually like, that makes sense. And we're like, yeah. And for me, it was like trying to make the world a better place. Peace and love, peace and love. Peace and love. I wasn't trying to be violent. The whole point of me talking to my friends was so they could realize what violence was, how it's caused, and like how we could stop it or something. It, it was something like that, I don't know. So I just didn't want violence. I was just talking to my friends. Me and my brother were like, yo, we could make a movie, we could do, do all of this stuff. All of us, we were waiting to do something, something, but we never actually do it. Let's do it right now. We were, whew. So yeah, I remember crying in my room because I felt like I was 
the only one who understood. The only one on earth who understood. Oh my God, it felt so, it felt like heaven on earth, but also hell on earth. Once it was heaven, it was also hell. It was like scary, really scary. I felt like I was facing my greatest fears. I just remember thinking, nobody understands. And yeah, so then my <laughs> parents called the cops because I was going off. I was like, ha ha ha, the Joker, the Joker's right. <laughs> I was going off. These dogs. So there was honestly so much that happened. I could write a whole book about it. And I started to, like I started writing a whole book. I gave up, like I was all over the place. And uh, I was like, nah. Nah, maybe not. Maybe in the future. So yeah, everything, it, it felt like everything was a joke and it felt like no one was laughing. <laughs> like I was possessed also by like a demon, but it was my own demon. It was so weird. I was the only one laughing and I was the only one who understood and I was like, the Joker was right. Obviously not the violence part. I, I don't agree with the violence, but the whole idea, the concept of the Joker. All of a sudden, like every popular TV show, every brand, every company, every movie, all had messages of what we learned, like the awakening experience. And we were listening to music, oh my God, we we're listening to music too. And there was this one guy and he has an album called Everybody. <laughs> Plug, it's named Logic. And there was a part, one part of one of his songs, um, he said, everything ain't what it seemed like. MF, mother effer, I know. And we were like, are you f Oh my God, he knows, who else knows? And we were just like, and then I realized almost every celebrity knows this and they don't want to say anything because they want to be at the top. I have to share this information. So yeah, I tried to share it and it didn't really go as planned. Oh, and I felt like I loved everybody and everything. I felt like I could kiss anybody. I didn't care what they looked like, who they were. I could just love and embrace everybody. It was quite weird and it felt like I finally understood something that most people don't understand. I feel like it was some type of third eye awakening but also led to psychosis and and to get like a better perspective of psychosis and mania that was my brother basically it's like you're a clown and you're trying to make a joke that everyone can laugh at but nobody gets the joke and they're all like crying for you. I'm in this cage and everybody else is just crying, looking at me in this cage while I'm just sitting here making jokes. But my face is also crying. And it's like, I'm not actually in this cage, but it's actually everybody else in the cage and I'm the only one who's out of it. People who have it, it's not like they know that they have it. It, it feels normal. And I saw this one video, this guy, he had like a pink shirt. And then he said, oh, a person with psychosis would probably think that it's a blue shirt. And I'm like, what? That is clearly a pink shirt. Like, what? That that was not, no. You could have a degree, you know, you could read all these textbooks or whatever, but you're not gonna tell me about how I feel and what I think. I knew like I needed to get better, but to get better from what exactly? It was also really cool in the mental hospital because I did psychic readings and I was just purely running on intuition. My body would just do stuff. Like some weird stuff like that. I would just write down names in my little journal. People would be so surprised and I'd be like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Sometimes I'd cry and I would have panic attacks because I would not know what was happening. I'd be like, this is too much, this is too much. Like too much power, way too much information. And a lot of the doctors and therapists kept treating me like I had a disease. Kind of relieving to have people who don't think you have some weird thing, disease. And I was different. It felt like I died. Pretty sure I had like an ego death. I didn't feel like eyes though. I just felt like a, a body. What would make me feel better at the time was if somebody just played along. Even if they were confused, I just wanted someone to play along. And luckily the people at the mental hospital did. The patients, like they would just play along and I would love that. Cause it's like, it's yes, like it's just a joke. Everything is a joke. They didn't make me feel alone at all. They made me feel like I had somebody. And we were all there for each other. We would literally die for each other. I really like that. Oh, and it, it felt like the Truman Show, breaking out of the matrix. The universe was doing everything in its power to stop me from sharing the information. It was cool. Every time something would happen, I'd be like, yo, universe, hey. Like, I see you. The doctors and the staff members would talk to me like I was crazy. 
I guess I was, you know, <laughs> but um, they would ask, are you hearing voices? Do you think you can do any magical spells? And I'm like, bruh. The thing was, I didn't hear voices, but I could feel things. Maybe they were voices. Is that what voices are? Like, I don't know. Whenever I would meditate or something, sometimes I would get words, like, feel them. If you call that hearing voices, all right. <laughs> Fun. Also, I'm not saying people who hear voices are crazy. I don't think anyone's crazy. I don't think normal is a thing. Like, I really don't think normal is a thing. Also, I remember looking at my hands and just being like, oh my god. And it, oh, sorry about my finger. <laughs> like, I fully understood the power of a human being. I was like, I could kill somebody with my bare hands right now. Not actually, I wasn't thinking of killing anybody, but I was realizing my power. I could literally take a life if I wanted to. Like, isn't that so crazy? The power of my mouth and my words. I can go convince somebody to do something right now. Open the door right now. I could go convince somebody to go to the store. I could convince somebody to do things. Anybody can. It was a lot. I feel like we can't really process that. The power of your words can literally save a life or take a life. Like that to me is was so crazy. And I remember like, I wouldn't talk to myself. Well, I mean, I kind of would, but it felt like I was channeling spirits. Also, by the way, only I could call me crazy. Nobody else can. It's that thing where if you call yourself fat, nobody else could call you fat. I also felt like uh, we fight over the dumbest things. Literally the dumbest things we fight. We kill each other. We literally kill one another for the stupidest things ever. Politics, a significant other, anything, anything. A Gucci bag. Prada, it's not just a bag. Like what? That is crazy. I remember trying to prove how ridiculous fighting was. What is the point? But also I learned that I should not push any of that onto anybody. I'm glad that I've learned to not push things on people. I'd be like, no, this is how it is. But no, it isn't. My perspective is my truth. So right now I'm speaking my truth and any other person can speak their own truth. Everybody has their own truth. There is not one truth that has to be learned or believed. It's everyone's truth, everyone's perspective. And uh, the line of time, it was going in all ways, you know? And, uh, well, you probably, I don't know if you do know, but I really hope you learned something. I hope I helped somebody. That's just my experience. I just wanted to share it. In my next video, I'll be talking about my mental hospital experience. So please stay tuned for that. There was a lot that went on, but I, I just summarized it as, as short as I could, concise, laconic as I could. If you liked the video, please give it a like, and if you didn't, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.